splashed it all over the page. Um, I am in remission from perfectionism, but often think of the crystal and horse I used to ride, traveling far on its back, seeking success and stranger's affirmation. Its legs splintered at a trot, shattered at a canter. Every mistake sent me hurtling to the ground. Still, I lived, envious of scripted, limitless worlds on television and of babies with their rigid, unslouching spines. How I wished to be faultless, but the times I felt the wind in my hair were fleeting as a laugh. There was never enough to feed it without starving my own heart, picking myself apart for each and every flaw so at long last I've begun to give it up. Accepting my shortfalls is a vast, uncharted land I traverse on foot, mapping mistakes like rivers, mountainous pain, places I wouldn't have dared explore for fear of failure. In the heat, scars emerge from hiding, blossom across my skin. On my walks, the smell of lavender drifts from a sprig hanging out of a dumpster. And really, it's the best I can hope for. All right, this one's a little mini extended metaphor about depression, everyone's favorite topic in poetry, uh, called Mind Jungle. Conifers grow thick, trap all the sky's moisture in their branches. Compass needles spin and abandon. Behind every third tree, a shadow takes the shape of a man. Cicadas ring out like old light bulbs. The air tastes of dead deer left to rot. I lived there full time amidst torn up escape routes and hollowed out neighbors. It turned months into dust and left me dreamless. Now it opens its arms to you like a forgotten friend. Travel with care. It has a knife for a tongue. One more in that de depression core uh, here called The Dancer Breaks. And uh, thanks to my dad for reminding me of this poem and the previous one. I said, like, what poems should I read? He, he dug these up from some archaic collection and said, how about these? And some other ones that I definitely wasn't going to. Um, <laughs> but this is one I forgot I liked so much. It's called The Dancer Breaks. Her metronomic steps slip out of rhythm. Pirouette muscles quiet and the earth stops dead in space propelled by nothing. Her bird frame quivers, a conductor's wand after its song hung suspended in the glassy air, then drops to, to a ball, a black hole, gravity condensed to a point so potent she engulfs the sun. Her hands command no wind. Her eyes are dark spots in the sky where moons belong. Her hurts and art, a form that transcends all choreography. She trembles and births new galaxies of pain. This poem was inspired by a woodblock painting by Urugawa Hiroshige called Evening Snow at Kanbara. It recently got accepted for publication, so yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> And it's kind of sort of, well, I'll leave that for, you know, I'll just let it speak for itself. At last we lay eyes on Kanbara, quiet in the moon's argent light. You look to me and I see mountains of snow in your mind, built up over our time on the cold roads. Nothing but winter's white dust moves, wind blown like brush strokes on the canvas of this moment. You turn west without another thought. I watch the ground take the shape of your steps. I know a bead of ice trails down your cheek, 
like it does on mine as I turn east. In spring, you'll sit and watch azaleas bloom. Paradise flycatchers will sing above. And I'll be a world or a dream away under a cherry tree north of Fuji. skip the one that transitions into the slightly lighter things for the sake of time. Uh, this one just got published in this uh, delicious collection, Savor, Poems for the Tongue, an anthology of food-based poems. Uh, it's called How to Savor an Avocado. <laughs> With your hands, cradle its fullness and its weight. Press the ridges of your fingerprints against its small black bumps as it gives itself, but slightly, into your grip. Twist the stem for a green peak within, then have it. Crescent movement of your knife. Hold the fruit along its newfound seam and repeat your cut for quarters to unfold lotus-like from its tender wooden heart. Pinch the corner of the skin and peel slowly, unsealing an envelope, thumb at rest in the concave of its verdant flesh, two fingers arched along its back. Welcome it to your mouth, the secret you repeat upon first hearing until it's part of you. Introduce it to each of your teeth, let it swaddle the enamel before it ever meets your throat like desperately good news, swallow slowly so it will last. Contrary to uh, what, what that last poem might have led you to believe, um, here's the title of the next one. I want to get into your heart, not your pants. I'm not trying to lay you down in an ocean of linen like two submarines converging on the geothermal depths. I just want to know how you feel about the open sea. If the endless expanse trembles your skeleton and your nerves flare like you'll surely be devoured. I want to know if you feel the same as me, cumbersome yet insignificant like a sun-peeled empty shack. I'm not asking you to rattle walls with me until they collapse. I dream of lining them with artifacts, unearthed by exploring the frontier mindscape stretching out from me to you. I don't need you to want to pounce when I pass like a house cat on a quivering vole, nails entrenched in my shoulders, teeth ferocious for my neck. I want to nestle down by your side and learn the meaning behind the subtle sounds of your breathing. And I want you to choose to do the same. That was my 30 second morning. I have uh, two poems, which one should I do? Debut or this is a gleeful poem? This is a gleeful, this is a gleeful poem. Yeah. All right, that's, the way, that's where I've been moving toward, like I said, moving toward joy. This is a gleeful poem with the smell of manure dimmed and sweetened with familiarity. <laughs> with a blanket of barnyard kittens too soft for metaphor. Mulberry stains, I was just messing around with a mulberry tree a couple minutes ago, so there we go. Mulberry stains in rivulets across our hands and cheeks and the cream of fresh milk still wet on our lips. The straw pile holds no hidden pitchfork and we throw ourselves from the attic through 20 feet of air into its scratchy embrace, then dash back inside, climb as fast as our limbs will take us to the ledge where we leap again and again and again. <laughs> Thank you.